I'm Rob Lacuri, a senior editor here at Gold Derby with Lily Ray, who co-stars as Sylvia in the excruciatingly tense and highly satisfying HBO thriller, The Undoing. Lily, who would have thought that it was Sylvia who is ultimately the hero of this story, right? Yes, that's right. She, she, um, listen, I think the great thing about the show is there is no way to, to, you can get some things right, but there's no way to predict the whole thing. So, um, her sort of what happens at the end with her, um, I, I think it would have been very hard to, to predict, but I think it makes all the sense in the world that it's that it's what happened. Yeah, because I keep I kept watching you in the courtroom and in various other scenes, thinking, like, what is she up to? Is she yeah. is she a force of good or a force of evil? And I think right. that's actually really interesting, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, I really do. And I think that that's you know that's so much the the question of the uh, of the show is is this person a, a force of good or a force of evil in this person in grace's life and some are very clearly one or the other and some are both and um and sort of having to try to sift through that navigate through that uh, with everything changing all the time and and i think sylvia is someone who you know it's it's in no ways is it, it black and white especially at the beginning um, that this is a person to trust. This is a person who, you know, will always stand by her side. But then by the end, uh, that's what that's what happens. And it's, you know, I think it's hard earned those those friendships where you um, you kind of go into the deep end and you go into the mess. It's either the end of the relationship or the relationship is going to solidify even further. But it's not going to stay the same once you've been through uh, what they've been through together. Yeah. And so, like, I started out with the preconceived idea that Sylvia uh, and the role she would play in the series would be something like an antagonist or like, you know, the clicky, vacuous school mom. Right. Um, but we soon realised that uh, while Grace's picture perfect life is unravelling after a series of devastating revelations, um, Sylvia's super loyal and she's a confidant. And I was kind of really rooting for Sylvia to like step up. And I'm, I was so satisfied when she ended up doing that. I was just wondering at what point were you like, did it click for you from the beginning? Cause you knew what her arc would be, or was there a moment where you thought um, that Sylvia's trajectory was going to change? I didn't know in reading when I read the first two episodes, I didn't know. Um, but I did in speaking to Susanna, I had, because she sort of had the whole thing planned. Some of it wasn't even originally, you know, it was sort of scripted along the way. Some of it was still sort of in process, but she, she did um, give me a sense of, of what was going to happen. On the other hand, I think part of, part of what's so fascinating about, about that relationship and about Sylvia is that, you know, I, I, I do think she has been antagonistic in relationships. She is someone who who can be a pot stirrer. She is someone who maybe isn't always to be absolutely completely trusted. But her relationship with with Grace is singular, and that relationship um, it really stands it stands the test. It, um, you know, it's the real deal. And, but it is hard one because even like withholding what she does from Grace when Jonathan has come to her, you know, at the time, I think it's, it's an omission of kindness. It's sort of her evaluating. I don't think this is a piece of information that's going to help my friend, whether that's right or wrong. I'm not sure it was the right choice, but I understand why she made it. Uh, and then also her professional obligation. She's she's like a she's really devoted to her work. She's devoted to her daughter, and um, it was privileged. And then suddenly, you know, when everything is upended, it's like she has this piece of information that she then has to sort of risk the her their friendship. You know, she really has to kind of fall on the sword and say, "This is what I know, and this may be the last time we're ever uh, talking to one another." But and 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 then you know, of course it goes the other direction, but, but I, um, I understand why everyone was, was put into question, including, including Sylvia. 
Yeah, and although this series is, you know, quite thrilling and, um, you know, hard to watch at points and, and was, you know, it was just a fascinating ride, like a roller coaster. There's actually a lot of stuff that this um, series was actually tackling that David E. Kelly and Susanna Beer were trying to, uh, I think, establish for me, maybe as a viewer. I love it how it explored how we sometimes do twist ourselves into pretzels to make excuses for the people in our lives that are so obviously bad or toxic or distrustful, and yet we hold on to that glimmer, right? And that's a lot of that, there's a throughput in this series about that. And, you know, for example, Jonathan's able to grift and manipulate his way throughout the years, but he comes undone. I was just wondering if that, if that phenomenon really resonated with you personally. It did. I think, you know, something that's so beautiful about people, but can also be um, problematic, is how beautifully willful we can be. Um, and you no, know, it's not about intelligence and it's not about, because there is no one smarter than, than Grace. And there's no one, she, this is what she does. She studies people, she studies relationships. This is what she does. This is her expertise. And she's a brilliant woman. And she's a, a, a very, um, you know, she's, she's very attuned. And yet I think, the way we can operate, the way our subconscious, the way based, you know, whatever it is from, from our past, from our, what we, what we most, whatever our wounds are, what we most want, the, the, the things that we're trying to fill or, um, you know, we can so willfully unsee things. We, we, we unsee them so, so well that we actually, we never see them. We don't see them. It's like these massive blind spots that we all have and they're all so unique to who we are and how we move through the world. Um, and I love the way the show examines that because I think it's, you know, it's one of the most fascinating things to play. It's one of the most fascinating things about being a person and having relationships and sort of mucking through. And, um, and, uh, and I also love, I love to watch it, you know, in the shows that, you know, I, I'm not really interested in watching a lot of people making a lot of great choices over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of boring. Yeah, I want to see yeah. <laughs> some hot messes all over my TV. Uh, that's what I want. Yeah. Speaking of, as I said earlier, when I kept watching you on the show and saying, what is she up to? Um, there was a hope, actually, after episode five. I was, I think I, was, I tweeted this to someone um, from another show who was tweeting about the show obsessively uh, from Succession, and she was saying th there was a lot of people who, was like, who were thinking maybe your character had something to do with it. And I was like, yeah, it's totally, totally Lily Ray. It's all her. I think, I think she's, I think she's playing the killer. Obviously, completely off. Like I could not have been more wrong. But I was wondering, was there any hope inside, perhaps, me that you could have been a bad person, and would you have enjoyed doing that? Listen, I don't shy away from playing murderers uh, yeah. or bad people. I know, yeah, I know. Um, but in this particular case, I am really glad that the takeaway is not that the, the, the closest confidant that Grace has, has, is either a murderer or has been sleeping with her husband. I'm really glad that the takeaway is that, you know, listen, I know that they are, um, sometimes we get it wrong and our blind spots lead us into friendships that, that can wound us, but sometimes we really get it right. And those good ones are so worth it. There is nothing better than the, than the loyalty and devotion of, of female friendship and, and those people that you would show up every day in court for and, um, and sort of, you know, like that invisible hand holding that they do at the end is something that I found very moving. It's so precious and um, I'm glad. So I'm, I, I, I always love to play the killer, but I'm really glad that it that's not what I was doing here and that it was actually figuring out, you know, so I think their friendship was they, it was like an inherited relationship in some ways, their families had known one another, you know, those friendships yeah. where you're, you're close to the person, you're devoted to them, but it's not, you haven't, and, and because of what happens, it really, um, it's a sink or swim situation and they swim. Yeah, I'm so glad you said that because there's two um, aspects to why there was a little bit of doubt. <clears throat> and that's because we have all been burned by people in our lives, right? It's just something that we, we, it's like a rite of passage to build resilience, I suppose. And we've also seen on a lot of TV shows, women turning against each other. It's just like a trope. This show said, no, nah, 
we're not doing that. We're doing friendship that actually works and women sticking together. That's really refreshing. Do you agree? I really do. And and I and it's the truth. Both things are true. We know that sometimes it's the other side, but I think it's really important to shine a light on on the on the friendships that are that are good. And it's not that they're perfect. Like that's what I love so much about this relationship is that there's mess. There's mess. She she was she held on to this thing. She would have probably if this hadn't happened, she would have probably gone on forever holding the secret. And I think when you have a secret like that from someone, you know, probably would have always kept them at a little bit of a distance, even, you know, even subconsciously. But because yeah. of this, they really have to unearth the mess. And, and now it's, it's like a, it's like a marriage in, in the best sense. I mean, like when you really, um, have someone who you are committed to, and you're committed to going through the 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 muck with it's it it's um and I think you know those relationships that's there's nothing like it so I'm really I am so glad that that's what this relationship was and that's that's really why yeah I wanted to do it yeah you know um and actors often speak about uh, what they like or dislike about working on TV as opposed to film although this is different because David wrote the whole series and Susanna directed it all. So it felt like a long form movie. But do you do you have a, a view on a working in TV as opposed to film? Are they very different? Do you prefer one to the other? Well, it's true with this, that it sort of feels like in the Venn diagram, it really, there was, because we, um, we shot it like a film too, the way it was board, you know, the way the board was and the way the locations were. And we were in New York the whole time. And, um, you know, it, it felt like shooting a long movie uh, and and I that might gosh I, I mean I don't want to I don't like to pick favorites but maybe that's sort of best case scenario because it's everything that's wonderful about shooting a movie which is um, that you kind of have the you know you have the beginning middle and end and um, but you get like it's like getting to shoot three movies, you have so much more real estate, you have so much more time to tell the story and for things to unfold. And, um, and that's a really, you know, so a limited series is a great, it really is a format that I love. Uh, and, and yeah, this had like all the good things. I mean, and that's why limited series have become so popular over the last five years. Um, it's like the best stuff on TV right now is the stuff yeah. where it's, we're, we're in for a few episodes and then we're done, but we really get to delve deep. And you've done quite a few of them, obviously. Um, you've featured in numerous seasons of Ryan Murphy's American Horror Story anthology as a variety of characters. Like, it's, I mean, what a gift for a performer to be able to just take on various roles, but with the same team. What brings you back to Ryan Murphy projects? Why do you love them? That's what brings me back. <laughs> it's, it's Ryan Murphy. And it's the fact that it's like this, you know, it is like this rep theater company or something where you you get to tell a new story, play a new person, um, and yet there is the it is like coming home. It's you know you're coming back to the same stage, you're coming back to the same uh, and so much of the same crew and the directors and that that sort of so you get to have that kind of shorthand, which I love so much and um, and I value so much in in my work is, is having that shorthand with people, whether it's your scene partner or your director or your script supervisor, or costume designer. Um, and yet we get to kind of start fresh each time as well. So um, it's so specifically wonderful uh, being, a, being a part of the show in that way. Um, and yeah. I'm, I'm... Are you able to make the Sophie's choice and say who your favorite character is from the Ryan Murphy series so far? Or I mean, do you get asked that a lot? But once in a while, I it, it's Sister Mary Eunice. Yeah, I, mean, I was hoping you'd say that, right? That's it. it but to... I love Misty Day. Okay. I love Misty's um, optimism. You know, in such a dark world, I think she's someone who really. Uh, you know, she she really tries to sort of see the the, the bright side, uh, which is not easy to do in a lot of, in a lot of the situations that they're in. But I so I love I love her and I miss her. Um, but if I had to pick, 
it would be it would be Sister Mary Eunice. Yeah, I was <clears throat> I was expecting you to say that. Oh, that's my favorite of yours as well. Um, you. But I was also thinking. I mean, you, I, I know the answer to this is going to be I can't say anything. But can you give us give us anything about the upcoming American Horror Story, or are you just like, no, nah, I'll get fired? <laughs> I mean, it's too late now. You've shot it, right? So. <laughs> I can't. No, we're shooting it now. Um, oh, you are. <laughs> yeah, but I, uh, I, I can't. I can't say anything. I can't say anything. I know. I'm sorry. It's okay. <clears throat> I wasn't expecting anything less, but I thought I'd give it a shot. Right? You got to try your best. Yeah, um, yeah. You try and like but, maybe if I had a few cocktails or something. Well, you never next know. time. But I'll get HBO on that. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, how well, about you? Um, the, pandemic, so. Correct. Um, <laughs> a lot of us are in isolation or in quarantine and have put on, you know, uh, 15 pounds and, and probably drink too much wine, but that's a whole other interview. Uh, <laughs> completely different. Um, but you, you do have out. Barry Jenkins' um, upcoming project. Can you, what, I mean, that looks really, really cool. Uh, I mean, are you looking forward to people um, getting, sticking their teeth into that? I cannot wait for people to see to see this show. I really, I, I'm so incredibly grateful that I was able to be a part of, of it. I have loved, that's a book that I loved um, so much when I read it and having it then, you know, adapted by Barry and directed by Barry. And uh, I, I really, I don't even have the words for my, um, my gratitude and my excitement for that to be shared with the world. Um, and it was a really, it was an amazing experience to be a part of and to shoot and I, I loved uh the part that I played and um yeah I'm very excited about it yeah I'm looking forward to that as well well Lily thank you um you know you uh, you took a character that could have just been a stock standard best friend kind of boring thing and you made her something really interesting compelling and so and thanks for that we really appreciate your time today thank you so much that means so much to me thank you now Great. everyone go to Gold Derby make your predictions click subscribe we've got lots of contender chats just like this one with Lily